and hello and welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. In this video we are going to create a panoramic image inside the camera raw editor and then we are going from this shot to this one. We're going to introduce a lot more contrast, make the whole shot a lot darker and introduce some more golden hour light. Most of this will be done in the camera raw editor but I will also use a bit of Photoshop to finish the whole editing process here. If you want to follow along, you can find all the raw files in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So here we are in the camera raw editor and this is already the merged panoramic image. If you don't know how to do that, that's pretty simple. Down here you can see all the images I'm using for the shot. I'm just going to click on the first thumbnail, then I'm holding down the control key and just select all the other images which I want to merge. Once that is done, right click merge to panorama. For this image I'm getting a strange message like this. I don't care, I'm just ignoring it. So I'm just clicking on no. The camera raw editor will create a preview for the image. Here you have different projection methods. I think cylindrical looks quite good for this shot. So I'm just hitting merge. And we end up with an image like this on which we can now work on. So first off, let me change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, just to bring up the saturation a little bit. Then I'm going through the basic stuff. I do want this image to be a lot warmer, so I'm going to bring up the white balance temperature. And this will just introduce some golden hour light, which looks really good. At the same time, I do want to bring down the tint. This will make the yellow tones a little more intense. And I also don't like this purple color cast. So that's a pretty helpful tool right here. Next up, the exposure. Looking at the histogram, it does look quite good. We don't have any under or over exposure. Still, I do want to bring down the exposure, revealing some more details. Let's not go too dark, but I think that looks pretty good. Also, I want to bring down the highlights to further reveal details in the brightest parts of the image. Just like that. And for some contrast, I'm going to bring down the shadows. I want this image to be rather sharp. So let's also introduce some texture and some clarity. And finally, I can bring up the vibrance to push the saturation a little more. So that's already the image of the base adjustments compared to before you can see the colors look much different and also the exposure is much better. The next step is to apply some masking. Usually I apply a lot of masks. In this case, I just want to target the blue parts of the sky. So for that reason, I'm using color range mask. Click somewhere in the blue part like there. And I think this is looking pretty good. So with that selection, I'm going to bring down the exposure and thus I'm making the blue part a little darker just to add some contrast between the clouds and the sky. Let's go with something like this. Use the refine slider right here to make it a little more intense. Let's just deactivate the overlay for that. Let's see, doesn't work that well, so I'm not going to use the refine slider. All right, but that's already it for the masking. I just wanted to add a little bit more contrast up there in the sky. At this point, we can head into the color grading stuff. First off, with the color mixer. Here I do want to adjust the hue a little bit. First off, let me just bring down the orange hue very, very slightly, as well as the yellow hue, just to make those mountains a little more golden. At the same time, I could play around with the red hue, which will affect a very slight purple color cast, which we have in the sky. Not sure if this is visible in the video, but this looks much better. Also, I want to bring down the blue hue and the purple hue. And maybe I'm raising the magenta hue again, just to fix that strange color cast in the clouds. But that is looking pretty good. Let's head over to the saturation stuff. Yeah, I just want to bring up the orange saturation to make those bright mountainsides appear to be glowing. Perfect. Now let's head into the luminance tab. Here we can darken the sky some more by just bringing down the blue luminance. Let's see, I can also bring down the aqua luminance, I guess. 
again to work on those bright cliff sides I'm going to bring up the orange luminance which will make those mountains even brighter. We're going to lose some saturation because of this but I think it's okay for now. Let's head into the split toning stuff first off with the highlights and as always since we are working with the sunset image with warm highlights I'm going to further increase this effect by adding a warm color to the highlights. That's a good spot right there. Let's bring up the saturation a notch. All right, then let's head over to the midtones. Again, I'm using a warm color tone and let's bring up the saturation. Perfect. For the shadows, I'm using a cold color tone just to have some color contrast. And again, I'm using a very low saturation. Perfect. One more thing to do in the color grading, as always, I'm heading down to the calibration tab and just bring down the blue primary hue. I can drop it quite a bit actually, because this works great on those bright mountain sides, giving them a little more intense red color tone. Let's also bring up the saturation. Perfect. And then finally, I'm going to head into the details set for the sharpening. As always, I'm bringing down the radius, increase the details, add some masking, and then let's increase the amount of sharpening, just like that. Now let's open it up in Photoshop and finish this image. So one thing that is really bothering me is those mountains in the back on the right side seem to be not really straight. I want to change that. So I first want to create a guideline to get some orientation going on. Then I'm going to duplicate that layer just in case I mess something up. Now let's hit Ctrl T, right click in here and choose Warp. And with the Warp tool, I'm just bringing up the right side of the image. And thus I'm just trying to straighten those mountains back there. Also, I could make this one a little higher. And let's see, I think the left side is okay. Still, I want to bring it up very, very slightly. And now let's hit OK. Let's remove the guideline and I think this looks much better. So next up, I do want to crop it slightly because it's a little too wide for my taste. So I'm going to take away parts of the left and right. And then we need to fill the leftover gaps. Here yeah, I'm just using the lasso tool, creating a rough selection around the gaps. Then hit Shift F5 with Content Aware selected, just hit OK. And you can see how Photoshop nicely fills those gaps. All right, that looks good. I think I'm not going to change much for this image, but I do want to check the Nick Collection plugin. So let's head to Filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. So I do have the Glamour Glow effect in from the previous editing session. I didn't plan on using it, but I think this looks really, really good with the sunlight. So you can see I have reduced the saturation a little bit, but also added some warmth to the glow and overall just use a rather low glow amount. I think I'm going to keep it, but I do want to see if I can add another filter. So I do have the polarization effect in mind, Let's just play around with that. It's quite heavy on the colors, but I like what it does to the sky. So I'm not sure if I should apply it. Actually, I don't think I'm going to use it. I'm just going with the glamour glow and let's apply it like this. So at this point, I think I want to stop the editing before I'm going to overdo it. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting as always. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.